Today on A Commonly Good MTG, we're playing uh, what I'd entitled Greenosaurus, which is a Dr. Yukon Suckett original jam. And uh, we're playing a bunch of cheap green that uh, can be really mean. If that sounds pretty interesting to you, then stay tuned to find out more. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I'm your host, inventor of the reverse YouTube video, where instead of you are watching me, I'm watching you and your mama, Dr. Yukon Suckett. Yes, thank you. Film before a live studio audience. Thank you so much. You can't suck it. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck of my own invention. Why is that? Because it's the weekend, and I actually have time to do this kind of stuff. Uh, what's the deal here? So yeah, the deal was I was playing mono black like crazy. Mono black like crazy yesterday. I played like five different mono black games, and eventually I'm just like, this sucks. I can't I mean... You can play the mono black deck and sure you can win. Should I play something different? You just get hosed. It was just ridiculous. So I, I ended up playing mono green at some point. You know what? It just rocked. It rocked big time. But it was a deck I played, I don't know, like a month ago, two months ago, something like that, some mono green aggro. So I said, look, I'm going to go see if we can spice this up. So I went and got a bunch of cards from, uh, uh, what are we talking about? From Thunder Junction. And, uh, you know, we, we interweaved it. And we got we got an updated version of Mono Green Aggro. What I called it, I called it Greenosaurus because I like putting the word Asaurus at the end of words. Greenosaurus. You know what's not in here? Dinosaurs. Ah, there's no dinosaurs in here. So don't take it. It's not really anything dinosaur related. I know that Asaurus means lizard, like green lizard. But uh, in this case, there are no lizards. I mean, a Hydra is lizard-esque. That's about the closest we could probably get to it. All right, so... Um, what is the theory here? This is a Moneyball deck, right? Which is that it's not about putting out the big dudes that cost a lot. It's about getting out the little dudes that are consistent and grind people down in fast enough that they're gone by turn five anyway. And so that's what we got. We got a bunch of cheap creatures. Nothing in here is more than three mana. Absolutely nothing. So we got 20 mana, which means we can pack in more regular cards and, uh, we don't really care, man. As long as we get the three mana, you can pretty much play at least one card per turn. That's good. We get to five, we're playing two cards per turn. We're good to go. All right, so what we're going to do is we take a look at the cards in the deck. We'll talk a little bit about how the deck should work, and then we'll go out and we'll crush some hopes and dreams. What do we got? We got a guy that gets bigger whenever you put uh, bigger dudes out. Whenever another creature's battlefield, if it has power greater or toughness greater than this guy, put an oil, oil counter on it. Oil can Sam. Uh, this uh, allows you to do damage equal to power to a target creature, a planeswalker. And I got two. Bristly Bill. Whenever a land, landfall, you put a popo counter on a target creature. For five, you double all the popo counters on each creature you control. Each creature. Canker Bloom lets you uh, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or proliferate. That's a weird looking thing. It's a Phyrexian fungus. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, the Thunder Chicken. It's a mana chicken with reach who helps to pay for mounts. He's got special mount abilities there. It looks like he should be a mount, but he is not a mount. And that's the thing. Is they're talking all about the dude on the Thunder Chicken's back. That Thunder Chicken is by far the better thing to be paying attention to. All right, we got uh, Beast Caller who gets bigger every time you cast a creature spell. And whenever he dies, you put those Popo counters on other guys. This isn't really a Popo Counter deck, but it could be. Maybe that's what we should focus on in future versions. I just, that wasn't the point. Uh, Sharp Eye Rookie gets bigger whenever you put a bigger guy into the battlefield and has Vigilance. This one allows you to do damage. Just costs one more than this. But if you put it onto a mount, see what it is. If you do it, you put a, you get plus one, plus one, unless it's a mount, which case it gets a Popo Counter, and then you deal its, its power to target you don't control. So if he doesn't go after uh, Planeswalker, he just does Creatures. So between the two of them, that's the four. I was trying to see which one was better. They both have their pluses and minuses. All right, Drover Grizzly gives all your dudes trample till the end of the turn. 
Uh, this guy puts a popo counter on a target creature whenever at the beginning of combat. And then if he is saddled, you can double the number of popo counters on a target creature. Any, not even, not even the one that, that saddled, just any you feel like. Uh, this allows you to do one of three things, search for a creature or land. The other thing is put a popo counter on a target control and then shoot something. And lastly, exile target enchantment and artifacts. We got a lot of good anti-artifact and enchantment control. And there's a lot of artifact and enchantments in the current meta. Plukonos. This guy is such good value. Look at him. He's a 4-5 with reach for 3. That is fantastic. Because I'm not willing to go above 3 mana in this deck. But you get a 4-5 out of the deal. And if you can get up to 6 mana and you're, you can avoid it, you can afford a little life, you could turn this guy into a 6-6 six, six with Reach and Lifelink, and then if he dies, you put out two 3-3s, three one with Reach and one with Lifelink. So, uh, yeah, this guy is value incarnate. So, yeah, there you go. He's he's your big guy, even though he only costs three in reality. That's it. That's it. 20 lands. All right, so what are we doing? We're getting our little guys out. We're growing them. You don't need to grow them that much. We only need to get them up to like three or four for power. But it's just, just grind people down, right? Because if you can attack with three guys with three mana, that's, or not three mana, three power, that's nine points of damage. And we can easily do that by turn three or four, right? We can easily be doing that because these guys will start to grow. They don't have to grow too much. Even if we're just doing onesie twosie at the beginning, it's something. And then eventually we'll trample if we have to. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to pump up our guys to be able to get those extra points of damage in and kill them before we get to late game. All right, that's it. That's the deck. Does it have what it's take? Let's go find out. But before we do, let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Hands together. Dear Black King Toxrel, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, Please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentations of the women. All right, playing against Chauncey Terra Jin Clucky. Terra Jin Clucky. Ter Tertagen. Nope. No green crystal for you, but you get to stay alive. So the, the crystal taunts you horribly the entire time. Ah ha 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 ha! Yeah, I know. You can see me laughing at you, can't you? All right, we're plukinosing on the next turn. No blocks. Have a good time. Were you trying to play some rampy games on me, huh? Now I got a Plukonos is the problem. So I can block. You guys say these growers, they're okay, but if I have too many growers, then it becomes kind of a problem. This guy wants to ramp. All right, four. Let's get out these two dudes so we can grow them up. And all in. All right, question is, he's just going to lose Deep Root Rayfinder at this point. Nope, just going to suck it. Looks like your bear there. Yeah, man, I see your little green glow. And that crystal, that's not yours. I know it looks like a big old hot dog to you, but it is not. It's just a hover crystal. Oh, 
All right, so what are we packing here? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We got a grizzly bear coming out next turn, probably. If I need to, I can put out canker bloom. But uh, to get that drover grizzly out, it's going to be great if I want to be able to trample in. Of course, it's going to take me a turn to be able to ramp it up. are plenty big. If I pump the Pucranos, it'll be up to a five. That's quite quite enough. I can still sit in the six. I can make them dance around the twos and the threes. No, I'm just going all in. I'm going all in. I didn't realize he was only at seven. Yeah, there we go. I was still playing the long game. Victory. I are playing against Burgar Viking. Burgar Viking. Keep. We're going with this. We have no mounts. I got a bunch of guys at two. Bristlet Bill sounds like a good place to drop. Nah, Beast Caller. You guys start growing. Some people, man, they're just itchy trigger fingers. Right, let's go for Pluconos. If he's just got some more, got more shots in him, that's what he'll be doing. Otherwise, he's a good defender against the Caustic Bronco. All right, uh, uh, sharp ride rookie for two. Throw from the saddle. Might have to kill off his guy. Alright, we've got five, so we can do all the, all the above. Dead! Get in there, rookie! Okay, okay, five will double the number. We got five. Of course, turning it from one to two, that's not my sure of a double. It's a 100% increase, but still doesn't have quite the effect that you'd hope for. Ooh, Plukranos, huh? Yeah, she gained it herself. Perfect. What are you going to do? Draw a card for me? Yeah, let's do that. Another land would be great. That is perfecto. Uh, let's sort on to Plukranos. Uh, he's down to eight. We got Pukno showing up high. Grizzly Bill wants to sit there and double everything. Let's just hope that we get to keep these guys alive. He's just trying to pump his stuff. I got nothing. Your bat's just here for nothing. Wonder Twin Power activate. All right, uh, seven and four. We're gonna fight. Mm 
You can throw all your guys against it. So right now you're just trying to stem the tide. Yeah, you got a lot of tide there. I got the tide. You got those seawalls. Trample, huh? No attacks. We'll just chill. It's a bad situation. We've got to go after him, but I also need to double the amount of stuff I got going on. He's trying so hard to swarm. Oh, let's send in the 10-10s. That sounds like a good time. I mean, trampling the Dover Bear it sounds really, really good, too. He just had to thin out his herd a little bit. So I can saddle this guy up next turn. Got a lot of fives there. He's looking good. attacks while saddled. That sucks. Let's pretend we're going to do something awesome here. All right. I think we bluffed them. Victory. All right, we're playing against HA1. Ha! One. Keep. Nope. Ooh, look at the fancy boots. Sorry, you had your chance evolving adaptive. It was called last turn. If I want to aggro this thing, I'm going to have to put out Plutnos. Ooh, you would shoot that thing rather than Plutnos. Crazy. I see, that's what we're playing with here. All right. Stand in the place where you live. Strength. All right, that's it. I give my guys trample. I don't think it's really worth it. But not at this point. Alright, but does that he's actually a fairly decent defender. Don't care. Take your time. Well, this is the guy I want out. It says hexproof on it. Ward one. Alright, I'll have to wait on that. All in everybody. Uh what are we gonna do? We're gonna double things? Yeah, double double boil in trouble. What a vicious witch!
Yeah, you got some more boots. What do you got? Like one guy wearing like seven sets of boots? All right, there you go. We got a hundred pairs of boots. Good job with all that. Just flip around. If I transform him, do I lose that enchantment? That'd be great, but I have to wait another mana until I can do it. I'll try. That looks like I had enough to kill him anyway. Victory! Alright, we're playing against Sarkhan. Sarhakan. Keep. All right, number two, the Incredible Thunder Chicken. All right, that's it for you, man. All right, so next turn, I can put out the Dover, and I still have two left over, which really isn't enough. Question is, do you want to get to Plukronos? Is he better fundamentally because what do you got? Four versus four? Eh, I guess Dover Grizzly is perfectly fine. That sets up the ability to trample if we need to. Dover Grizzly is more of a team player than Plukronos is. Plukronos is better when you got closer to six mana. I mean, he's got reach, but so, so what? His ability to, to die and come back with value, that's his real great ability. Big difference is in their butts. That bear can only take two shots, while Plukronos could take five. It depends whether you need the defense or not, I guess. All right, this whole chat... It'll be for not if this guy's just out of the game right now. That was not what I was expecting to play, but that's exactly what we're going to do. Thunder Chicken! I think this Sarkhan is with us. He somehow weirdly roped that entire last turn. That's a baby. All right, put out Plukronos. Let's saddle up. Let's send them all in. All right, everybody gets trample. You get trample. You get trample. Whatever, man. You get trample. It's called trample. You sacrificed your baby for practically nothing. The thing is now that he, I don't have that bear anymore. He, yeah, he's out of mana. I totally won this thing. Now he doesn't have the bear, I can't trample over his swarms. That's what I was going to say. 
Victory! Alright, we are playing again, Spice Cubes. I was gonna make some joke about Spice Girls and Ice Cube, but I don't know very much from Ice Cube, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I know way too much about Spice Girls. Keep! Alright, we got Singleton guy out. Let's All right, let's put out Sharp-Eyed Rookie. And for two. We could go Grizzly Bear on the next turn. Interesting. Come on, you gotta attack. Who cares, man? All right, let's put out two people. Ooh, Canker Bloom, I could take out her best forge. That is lovely. He's gonna hate it. Uh, how are we gonna get around shoulder at this point then? I need something with some shot in it, but even then my guys aren't strong enough for it. Ooh, you're getting better. There we go. He's gonna block. Good. Got shoulder off our back. We can start passing him some stuff around. Is that all? He's got another. I know, you just have to let it go. Proliferate. Forgot completely about that. All right, go for it. And we're down to five. Now he's going to gain a little bit, but we can just swarm in on the next turn. It'll be fantastic. Now he's trying to avoid the swarm. Right, I don't think I need to put the Dover Grizzly out. That is the problem. Um, I could do this at any time. That's fine. I put the Grizzly out. I can just, let's just do that. I can use him for the saddle. All right, let's just go for it. No math. Double the amount of counters. They're right there. And we win with a trick. Viciously, viciously defeating our opponent. Victory! All right, so here we are with Greenosaurus. It has absolutely nothing to do with dinosaurs, but I just like throwing a saurus on the end of words. Uh, yeah, this ended up being a fantastic deck. Um, I ended up with a 90% win rate. 9-0. It was pretty freaking good. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's my money ball design, and uh, I think there's something there. I, I will have to keep looking at it. This could probably be applied to a lot of other colors, We'll just have to see how it goes. I can't be the only person to discover this. It's just something I noticed when I was playing some other decks. And uh, this is just a different version of that.
All right, so uh, let's get to it then. Um, who's the MVP? Who's the most valuable player? And the, the deal is, is I kind of feel like it's probably ornery thumblewag. Ornery tumblewag. There you go. Just because of his ability to double the number of tokens on, on a target creature. There was something else in here. Oh, was it um, Bristly Bill? It does the same thing. Double number of tokens on each creature control. Yeah, Bristly Bill, I think, might be it. But then again, also the intrepid the Thunder Chicken. I just, he needs to be called the Thunder Chicken. Um, and who cares about the dude on his back? Why isn't this guy a mount? It looks like it totally wants to be a mount, right? Um, just because of its ability to, to to have two mana of any color, which I only need green anyway, be able to pay for mounts. And we got a couple of pretty decent mounts in here. Um, I got to say, it's probably Bristly Bill. You know, we didn't really see much of him. He didn't come out a bunch. The Thunder Chicken came out a, a ton. But his ability for five to, to double the number of Popo counters in each creature you control. And we had a lot of that going on. The Evolving Adaptive does not do Popo counters. He just gets plus one plus for each oil counter. So he's kind of standing to the side, not making use of it all. But you can throw Popo counters on him. At which point he'll get bigger on the number of Popo counters that you double. So it's not bad at all. All right, anyways, but this deck isn't about getting out a ton of stuff. It's about just getting to three or four mana, or three or four power, and that's that's pretty much it. The Dover, with being able to do trample for everything, that is super powerful as well. Obviously, he's a little slow, and I didn't find it to be as effective as I'd hoped, but yet it was essential sometimes. Yeah, the, I've got to send it down to these two dudes. I'm going to give it to Bristly Bill, just because it always feels better just to double the number of Popo counters you got sticking out. Now, nah, I'm not giving it to anybody in particular. This whole deck was fairly decent, but nothing stands out as being the super card that keeps it all wrapped together. Everybody had their function, and they all did a good job. All right, that's it. Yeah, nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. Uh, let's see. Was this deck competitive? Yeah, 90%. 9-0. That is pretty freaking amazing. I never get numbers that high, but this deck always tends to take it. Um, one thing I noticed during one of the games was that it has a lot of control uh, between Throne from the Saddle, Hard Hitting Question, but that's only that's only two. You got Archdruid's Charm, which also can be used, so we got seven cards in total for that kind of thing. Uh, I guess Canker Bloom being able to take out you know, artifacts and enchantments. Yeah, I guess that's it. The only thing about this deck that bothered me is one point I had nothing but like shark pied hook uh, rookies, furry and beast collars, and evolving adaptives. That was a little much because I had nothing but those guys and nothing to pump them up, and they didn't pump each other up at all. I mean, sure, if you have evolving adaptive, furry and beast collar will get it up to two, but that's it. And furry and beast collar does the best shark pied rookie only if the power is greater. So it's like. I'd almost choke these guys back a little bit. You almost don't need as much as what's there. Might be worth it to tinker around with it just a tiny bit more. But that's good to have opportunities, right? But anyways, this deck still at 90%. It's hard to say you need to mess with it at all. So uh, was this deck fun? Yes. Why is that? Because we had so much to do in turns one and turns two. I mean, everything in turn two. We were able to start loading things down. We're getting our attacks in, and these guys don't stay at one or two. They grow. And growing, all we really want to do is hit three. That's the number we're looking for there. Like I said in the intro, three is the magic number. So, uh, so yeah, this was a fun deck. Because of the control, we're able to control the board enough, and we're able to keep up that grinding relentlessness. It only takes a few turns with enough guys rolling a three that you can end up winning the game. All right, was this deck interesting? Yes. Yeah, I mean, to me, it was interesting. Why was it interesting? Because this one, we were playing a lot of stuff from uh, Thunder Junction, and we were we were making use of the, the green money ball effect. So altogether, I thought this was an interesting deck. It wasn't something I'd really seen in the meta very much, and I thought it did an incredibly good job. So yeah, this was an interesting deck. All right, so let's add that up. Was it competitive? Absolutely. Was it fun? Totes my goats. 
Was it interesting? You betcha. So that makes this into an A-plus deck. And as I'm required by federal law to say, this deck is so choice. I'd highly recommend you pick one up, should you have the means. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, screw you guys, I'm going home. Bye.